Hi, I'm John Coppola. Let's turn out this first bowl together. I'm going to start by being sure my lathe speed is turned all the way down. Then I'm going to cover the jaws of my four jaw chuck with a piece of drawer line and material to make a jam chuck. We then bring the tailstock up close, but not all the way, so that we can be sure that we're placing the center of the tailstock into the center of the bowl that was left from the rough turning. Now we'll crank up the tailstock and make sure it's nice and secure against the jaws of the chuck. Now we're going to adjust the tool rest and rotate the bowl to be sure that we're not going to come into contact with it when we turn the lathe on. Okay, the lathe is on and now we're going to bring up the speed. I'll rest my right hand on the tailstock to feel for vibration. I typically find with these bowls that are roughed out I can get to maybe six or seven hundred RPMs before there's too much vibration. With a lighter lathe you may find you have to start even slower and bring up the speed as you true the bowl. Now that I'm up to about 715 RPMs, I'm going to go ahead and start truing the tenon. We're going to use a push cut with the flute closed as much as possible, because as we come down to the base of the bowl, we don't want to get a catch with the wing of our tool. This will also let us transition from the push cut into a shear scrape. Once we have the base flattened off, or actually maybe a little undercut, so that our bowl will rest on the outside rim, we can start truing up the outside. We're just going to find a cut that's removing enough material that we're not going to bounce out of the cut. You'll find if you take too light of a cut, you're actually going to just have the tool bouncing and being pushed back towards you instead of cutting the add a roundness off the bowl. Okay, now we're going to open up the flute of the gouge a little so we can remove more material as we come up the side of the bowl. As we move from the base towards the top, the bowl is further out of round, so more material has to be removed to true the bowl again. As I get to the top of the bowl, I'm going to lighten up my cuts and take it in a few passes. This will just keep us from tearing out any of the grain fibers at the rim of the bowl. All right, let's check our progress. You can see I still got a flat spot on either side. I'm going to turn the lathe back on now, and I'm going to bring the unevenness of the rim down using a push cut. We want to keep the flute closed because as we finish the cut, we're going back into a scrape with the wing of the tool. And we're going to nip the corner off from the rim just so we don't have a sharp corner to cut ourselves on. Now we're going to go back to the base of the bowl and try to make a nice, smooth, faired curve from the base to the rim. You can see me restarting the cut by moving the tool backwards and changing the angle just slightly, moving it towards the handle of the tool towards the rim of the bowl. To make a nice, faired curve, we always want to move the handle of the tool in one direction only. If we start trying to adjust our cut as we go, you'll find you've put undulations into your bowl that are hard to sand out. So you're better off coming off of the bowl and then restarting the cut, getting more material so you're not, again, bouncing out of the cut. The camera's doing a pretty good job right now of picking up the slight undulation we had when we restarted one of our cuts towards the base of the bowl. That is actually a fairly small undulation that I'm going to find out later is actually acceptable and I'm not going to worry about it. 
again, come back and kiss the edge with a little shear scrape so we don't have a sharp corner and check for a fair curve. Now the, the outside is to our satisfaction. We're going to come in with a half inch fingernail grind spindle gouge and finish off our tenning. Again, a nice close flute so that when we come to the base of this cut, we can transition to a sheer, sheer scrape without getting into any trouble catching the wing. Now we're going to have a push cut from the outside of the base to the center. And this typically leaves a little fuzz right at the base of the tenning that we got to come back and clean going from the bottom of the tenning into the base of the bowl. And that'll give us a nice clean corner so that our four draw chuck can rest on the base of the bowl, making sure that our bowl is not wiggling on the chuck. So now that that's all trued and we are okay with the outside shape of our bowl, we're going to start sanding. I like to start with 60 grit with a firm backup pad. This helps us remove any undulations that we have rather quickly. We're going to use the 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock portion of our sander here. And the opposite direction of the bowl is spinning. I like to put the lathe in reverse and sand with the 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock portion of the sander going clockwise, thus pushing the sawdust down and away from my face. It's also good practice to use a dust collector near the sander here to collect the bulk of the dust. I'm wearing a powered filtered helmet, which is also a face shield built into one. It's nice to have, but not a necessity. I would recommend it if you plan to do a lot of turning. Okay, let's stop the lathe and check our sand in progress. I'm gonna find a little tear out between the side grain and end grain where that transitions twice on the bowl. And I'm gonna highlight it with a pencil just so I know where to focus my sanding. Now again, notice how we're using the 12 to three o'clock portion of the sander and also changing the angle of the sander in relation to the bowl to keep that curve nice and faired. We don't want to focus on a low spot as that will just exacerbate our problem. We want to keep moving back and forth to fair in our curve. We're going to focus a little more on that problem area, but keep going back and forth to keep the curve nice and fair. Okay, let's highlight that tear out again. The camera's not picking it up from this angle, but you'll notice that it's a, looks like a couple streaks of lighter colored grain. And these will show up once you apply a finish. So we want to make sure we eliminate those now with our 60 grit paper before moving on. So now we're gonna speed through the process. I just want you guys to get a good look at how I proceed through the grits. I make sure that I get all of my defects with the first grit, as mentioned before, 60 grit sandpaper. Now I'm gonna move from 80 th through 320 going uh, 80, 120, 180, 220 to 320. Once I get to 180 grit, you'll notice I put a soft pad on my backup pad for the sander. This just helps me fare that curve in, get more even sanding. 
the pencil marks I'm using make helps me make sure that I'm eliminating all the scratches from the previous grit before moving on. Now that we've got the outside sanded up, let's go ahead and put it back on the chuck using our tenning. We want to make sure we keep pressure on the center of the bowl so that the base of our bowl is resting on the face of the chuck jaws. This will keep any vibration um, from being added to the turning process on the inside. As we work on the rim of the bowl, we're further away from the chuck, thus it's easier to get vibration and chatter. And chatter and vibration means more sanding, which no one likes to do. So what I'm going to do to reduce that chatter is work about one, one to one and a half inches at a time from the rim towards the bottom of the bowl. Now what you won't see on this video is me going back and sharpening my bowl gouge. I use a two fluted one-way gouge. So I have two cutting edges uh, simply by removing it from the tool handle. I can sharpen both and put it back on. That helps me reduce my time walking to the grinder. One mistake that I did make though was I did not check the setting on my one-way very grind setup and the foot of it had actually moved changing the cutting angle of my tool which I did not notice until a little later on in the process um, which that was giving me a little more chatter than I'm used to so I kind of break my own rule here in a minute where I go back to the outer rim of the bowl uh, down towards the bottom even though I've removed the bulk of the material below. But the cut is much smoother now and it has less tear out and will be easier to sand. We just want to clean up the base and now move on to sanding the interior of the bowl. Again started with 60 grit. Being sure here to not spend too much time at the bottom of the bowl Otherwise, I'll make a little valley that is very hard to get rid of. So I'm just going to get those tool marks out, sand around the low spot, not on it, and use the radius of the sander to help fare my interior curve. I have the sander tilted a little downwards, helping use that uh, three inch radius to my advantage. The bowl this time is spinning forward and the sander is again spinning clockwise. As you can see I'm going to focus a little more on that upper edge because that is where our tear out tends to be. So here on the inside we can see that tear out a little better again at the transition between our side grain to end grain. Let's highlight it with a pencil so we can see where we're going to work. Now we feel with our finger just to make sure that curve is nice and fared. I'm happy with the curve but again that and grain tear out. We just got to focus on that before we move ahead with the grits. Now when I'm sanding the outer rim of the bowl, I'm just using the edge of the sander because I don't want to change that OG shape that I have too much. It's very easy to sand that away. Now we're being sure between each grit to check for swirl marks from the previous grit before we move on. Okay, once we get up to 320, we're going to do a quick hand sand, make sure all the tool marks are gone. Okay, what we missed here was the removal of the bulk of the tenon. Again, we used the jam chuck with the drawer liner material. 
This we did with the same push cut transitioning to a scraping cut that allowed us to remove the bulk of the material so that we were left with a nub that we can remove with a chisel. Once we've removed it with the chisel, we can easily hand sand that remaining portion in with the rest of our and here's our finished bowl. If you guys have any questions or comments, I'd love to see them below. I will be making updates to this video and other videos that are instructional for you guys.